It's Phillies Nation on your TV. Corey Simon and Pat Gallen. We are brought to you by BQ Basement Systems, and we're at the lovely Fieldhouse Sports and Beer Hall in Center City, Philadelphia. One guy from the Philadelphia Phillies who continues to produce, and it's not a guy that everyone loves, actually. It's Jonathan Papelbon. He just keeps doing what he does. And he again spoke with, with Jim Salisbury of CSNPhilly.com and talked about wanting to move on at some point this season. Here's a quote from him. He says, quote, yeah, I will be disappointed if I'm not traded, if we continue to lose. I will be disappointed if this continues to happen, if we continue to do the same things as we've done the last couple of years with me, where we try to do something and get something done with me, and then nothing still happens, end quote. So Papelbon sounds like he wants to move on, and he really hasn't wavered from that position. I don't disagree with anything he said in that interview. He was very measured in his words to Jim Salisbury of CSNPhilly.com. Papelbon said that, you know, He's producing right now. He's on a team that's not producing. So if the Phillies can't turn this into a winning situation quickly, he wants out. Right. And I really think this is the year that the Phillies will be able to trade Jonathan Papelbon. They were unable to do it in 2014 or right. in 2013 or in the winter going into 2013. Despite the fact that Papelbon has pitched well his entire career as a Philly, a 2.41 ERA in 204 appearances for the Phillies, saved 88% of his games, 110 saves and 125 chances, a whip of one. Okay, how about this? Only Papelbon and Felix Hernandez over the last four seasons have nine strikeouts per nine innings and two walks per nine innings or fewer. Wow. So he has been an elite performer for yeah. the Phillies. It just has flown under the radar because they haven't been winning as many games as they have yeah. in years past. But I do think this is the year that Papelbon will be moved for, for a few different reasons. The contract mm -hmm. owed the remainder of his $13 million this season right. plus the $13 million vesting option next year. So if he's moved to the deadline, it's about $19 million. And if the Phillies pick up a little bit of that, it's not a, it's not a completely crazy price for, for another team to take on. Sure. And the fact that Jonathan Papelbon is still a productive closer and there are just closers that go down all across baseball all the time. I think there would be some disappointment among Phillies fans if he's not dealt because we've been hearing about it for so long. So let's analyze the possibility of the market for Jonathan Papelbon. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Well, closer is a position that's volatile year to no year. Doubt. I mean, you only see a handful of guys stay in that role and dominate for years. Papelbon's one. Obviously, Mariano Rivera is the prime example. Craig Kimbrell. But other than that, I mean, ha look at this. This is worth three. This list is insane. We're three weeks into the Major League Baseball season, and there are already 12 closers who have either been removed from their role, began the year on the DL, mm -hmm. are on the DL now, or have really struggled. The teams that stick out to me on this list are the Tigers and the Indians, because I see those as two teams that could really see themselves as contenders. Sure. You know, the Indians made a couple augmentations over the offseason, and their closer, Cody Allen, has stunk early, early this season, and the Tigers are perennially a candidate for Papa Bonds. One of these years, they're going to need to improve that bullpen if they want to win a World Series with Miguel Cabrera. But the dark horse team that I've been uh, pining all along, I wrote this last week for CSN Philly, is the Washington Nationals. Interesting. Weak bullpen. Tyler Clipper is out in Oakland. Rafael Soriano is a free agent. Drew Storen is the closer. But if you add Papelbon, you can put Storen back into that setup role where he thrived in years past. And if you think about it, the Nationals are the exact situation that Papelbon thought he was getting into when he came Correct. to Philadelphia. Strong starting rotation, not as much of an offense, and a lot of leads you're going to have to protect. So I think the Nats would be a perfect fit for Papelbon. All right, that storyline is an interesting one, one that is not going away. Another interesting storyline that maybe we didn't think would be that interesting, Freddie Galvis this year has really come on. It's not all about his defense. He's hitting this year and hitting well. Hitting 361 when this road trip began. That was the sixth highest batting average in the National League, second best in the entire majors among shortstops. And how about this? Freddie Galvis already has four three-hit games. The only player in baseball with more is D. Gordon. I don't think anybody saw this kind of April coming from Freddie Galvis at the plate. Not at all, and he made an absolutely outstanding play on Saturday night. Ooh, that's what he can do. He can pick it with the glove. Now, coming up, Severino Gonzalez. Yes. He comes up from AAA. He's going to make a start on Tuesday night, and this is big because he's really the first of the prospects, the pitching prospects, that have come up. But this is not new. Over the past few years, we've seen guys like David Buchanan, guys like Vance Worley that have come up and to varying results. So we're going to keep an eye on Severino Gonzalez for sure. And here's Ray Burris, who is the Lehigh Valley pitching coach. He spoke about Severino. I've had a little time with him in last year's uh, uh, 2014 season. So some of the things that I got to see him do and, and improve up on those things we worked on in, in spring training. Uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how he goes about his business this year as well, based on what we talked about in spring training. And I think sometimes uh, so many fans in this game and so many uh, decision makers in this game get hung up on velocity. If a guy has pitch ability, he can pitch. I don't care how hard he throws. If he can locate this fastball, he can locate his pitches, he can get hitters out. 
All right, so what are you expecting to see from Gonzalez? I'm expecting to see exceptional command because that's what Severino Gonzalez has displayed at every minor league level with 67 walks in 415 minor league innings. That's impressive. So not only does he have an ERA under three throughout his minor league career, but he's walking 1.5 1 batters per nine innings. That kind of command is something we didn't see from a lot of these Phillies call-ups. Like Vance Worley was not exceptional with his command. Jay Happ was not. But Severino Gonzalez, if you, if you look at some of the scouting reports, he is right around the zone. He pounds the zone. He's not getting as many strikeouts as he did early in his career. But, you know, I'm expecting big things. It's, it's intriguing to see a 22-year-old pitching prospect come up and debut for the Phillies. I'm glad they went that route no rather than going to Dustin McGowan. Again. Yeah, now he's not going to be a number one or number two. He's not an ace-type pitcher. Right. But with that command, he can certainly stick around sure. in this league four years to come. It'll be exciting to see what Severino Gonzalez has for us. We'll see what Rachel has for us next. Don't go anywhere. It's Phillies Nation presented by BQ Basement Systems. Do you have a wet or musty basement or crawl space? A crack in a basement wall or an interior or exterior wall? How about an uneven sidewalk block or sinking concrete slab? Call BQ Basement Systems for free inspection and estimate. Go to BQBaseball.com. Our customers tell us it's important that they know who they're doing business with. Basement foundation issues are never fun, and finding a contractor that you can trust can be hard. That's why I founded BQ Basement Systems in 1997. We're the experts in identifying and fixing problems in your basement, your crawl space, foundation repairs, and all things basementy. Have one of our certified inspectors out for your free evaluation and estimate. Visit us at BQBasementSystems.com or call us at 1-800-339-2070. If you're a sports fan, you need to check out Sports Vault. Our stores will surround you with a great selection of autographed memorabilia, licensed apparel, trading cards, and novelties. Want to meet your favorite local and national superstars? Sports Vault brings the legends to you with dozens of in-store appearances. Check out any of our three locations in King of Prussia, Exton, or Moorestown. Or visit sportsvaultshop.com and use the code PHILLIESNATION to save 20% on your next order of autographed merchandise. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Travel is not the exciting adventure it used to be. I still love the destination, yet getting there can be a hassle, unless you travel like the pros. Major League Vacations offers exciting personal or group travel options to your team's away game, or your favorite vacation destinations. MLV does all the legwork. You focus on the experience. For more than 20 years, MLV has been a trusted partner to thousands of people just like you. Visit MLV.com and make travel exciting again, or call 800-222-6256. Tell them Ricky Bo sent you. Welcome back to Phillies Nation, presented by BQ Basement Systems. I'm Rachel McCauley. First up, our trending topics, presented by the Sports Vault. Come meet Ken Giles on May 9th at their store in the King of Prussia Mall. Get your tickets at sportsvaultshop.com. And first up, we'll take one of your fan questions. Hey, I'm Mike Cleary from Northeast Philly. I wanted to know, what's the best reason to watch the Phillies this year? That's a great question. I believe it's your civic duty, because if we're Phillies fans, we've got to watch this stuff. But I'm looking at the emergence of the young talent, one being uh, Odubel Herrera, the other being Cody Ashey. With Herrera, it's nice to see them kind of mine themselves a young talent that you know comes from another organization. He's hitting well defensively, still working out the Kings, working out the rust in center field. Um, I think that we'll also see him in the infield maybe in the years to come because Roman Quinn, who we'll talk about, is a guy that might emerge as a, as a center fielder of the future. And Cody Ashey as well. I like what I've seen from him because he's not making the defensive mistakes that he's made in the past and he looks like he can be at least an above average hitter and that's what the Phillies need. Well, the best reason to watch the Phillies is because baseball is baseball and it's the summertime and that's what you're supposed yes, to watch, exactly. isn't it? <laughs> what else is there? Now, I'm going to stay in the infield. I'll say Freddie Galvis. I mean, Freddie Galvis, as we talked about earlier in the show, really impressing early on with his offense, but from a defensive standpoint, he made a play last Saturday that Ryan Sandberg said yeah. was one of the best plays he's ever seen, and that's a guy who's seen more baseball than pretty much anybody on the planet. So <laughs> when you watch Freddie Galvis, you never know what you're going to get defensively on a given day. Also got to go to the bullpen. We knew the bullpen was going to be the strength of this Phillies team entering the season. Ken Giles still has a zero ERA. We've seen Luis Garcia emerge, finally uh, turn that mid-90s fastball into results. 
And with Jonathan Papelbon at the back end, the Phillies' bullpen is still very talented. It's just that they're not building enough leads to make use of them. Right, sure. Right, I also think you got to watch Cole Hamels. He hasn't been the Cole we th thought he might have been so far this season, but he's going to try and pitch you know, his way out of town. So, you know, at some point he's going to pick it up and start, start being pretty awesome. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of our best tweets of the week. First up is from Tim Steckel. So not only are the Phillies in last place, but the Mets are apparently unbeatable. This is going to be a very, very long season. And the next one is 11 straight is impressive against anyone, but the Mets did it against the Phillies, Marlins, and Braves. So let's take a deep breath. Guys, the Mets have been off to an awesome start this season. It's, they look great. Yeah, they're a couple years ahead of schedule, in my opinion. Yeah. I thought the Mets were going to be about a 500 team, maybe 85 wins this year, and then contend in years to come. But look, when you look at this pitching staff, that's why I think the Mets have staying power. With Matt Harvey being the ace of aces, John Neese off to a terrific start, Jacob deGrom off to a terrific start, Bartolo Colon, the ageless wonder. Still does it. I, saw, Still around. I saw a stat that uh, the Mets, they went 10-0 on their homestand. Yeah. I think that was the first 10-0 homestand in Major League Baseball since 1991. So that just shows you how rarely a streak like that happens, and it began with the Phillies. And they get just enough hitting from guys like Curtis Granderson, Lucas Duda. I know David Wright's hurt right now, but he'll yeah, be they're the, doing it all without David Wright. They're doing Wright. it all with, yeah, without him as well, and, and Lagaris. They just have these guys that aren't household names necessarily, but they continue to get it done. And yet, like you said, the pitching staff there is just insane, and they're going to be for years to come. So they have staying power, and because the NL East is so bad from top to bottom, yeah. they're going to beat up on those teams. I get you can only play who's on your schedule, but right. they're going to gain from that. Yeah. Let's take a look at Chase Utley. You know, Ryan Howard gets a lot of a lot of heat for not doing so well, but Chase Utley's really, really struggled this season. Why do you guys think he kind of gets a little bit of a free pass? Well, he does get a free pass, and, and it seems like kind of a double standard that Ryan Howard was moved down in the batting order so early in the season with his struggles, but Chase Utley was left alone in that three hole. I want to take a look at some numbers here. Chase Utley hitting 121 on the season. Now, if you exclude that two home run game that he had in the game Matt Harvey started, Chase Utley is four for 55 this season. Four hits in 55 at bats. Now, Part of the reason for that is bad luck. Ryan Sandberg has said as much. Part of it is just poor results. But Chase Utley, you do have to look at the luck factors. Chase Utley is 4 for 13 on his line drives. He's made 9 outs on 13 line drives. Typically, the Major League average is about 650, so he's way under there. Typically, the Major League average on ground balls is about 247. Chase Utley is 1 for 21 on ground balls. So you can look at some of that as weak contact, but some of his ground balls and line drives are just finding gloves, and that's resulting in a poor batting average. Without digging as deep as Corey did, I just think overall that when he's healthy, he's still one of the most productive, or has been one of the most productive second baseman in all of baseball. The numbers do support that. And with Ryan Howard, as you've spoken about, as we've spoken about on the show, that it's been years of a decline. And that's sort of the problem is that you kind of feel that, all right, Chase has done this before. When he comes back, when he is healthy, he can produce, he can provide, and right now he's not doing it, but he deserves the benefit of the doubt. When we come back on Phillies Nation, the guys will give their fantasy picks and we'll go by the numbers next. Phillies Nation is filmed each week at Fieldhouse Sports and Beer Hall in Center City, Philadelphia. Come by all season long for delicious food, daily craft beer specials, and live music every Saturday. Live sports. Craft beer. Great food. Good times. What more do you need? Every day is a party at Fieldhouse Sports and Beer Hall, the largest sports bar in Center City. Come to 11th and Filbert to see what you've been missing. The biggest problem with your phone is not a low battery or no signal. It's about what it does to your posture. Hi, I'm Dr. Lenny Roberts from Summit Spine and Wellness. For well over a decade, we've been helping the greater Philadelphia region reach their health goals. This is the most common posture problem that I see but you have no idea about the long-term neck and back issues you can suffer from if you don't correct your text neck. You don't have to live like this. We can correct your posture. Your initial consultation is free. Call Summit Spinal Wellness now at 215-487-2500. Our customers tell us it's important that they know who they're doing business with. Basement foundation issues are never fun, and finding a contractor that you can trust can be hard. That's why I founded BQ Basement Systems in 1997. We're the experts in identifying and fixing problems in your basement, your crawl space, foundation repairs, and all things basementing. Have one of our certified inspectors out for your free evaluation and estimate. Visit us at bqbasementsystems.com or call us at 1-800-339-2070. 
Philly has a long sports history filled with great players and moments. Shy Vintage Sports in Center City relives the glory years with fashionable attire for all your favorite teams. Separate yourself from the crowd with the hippest Eagles, Phillies, Flyers, and Sixers gear. Pick up some unique shirts featuring local teams of yesteryear or come to fun events where you can learn about your favorite teams. So if you're a sports fan, then you need to check out Shy Vintage Sports. Visit them at 13th and Walnut or shivesports.com. Welcome back to Phillies Nation, presented by BQ Basement Systems. Let's go down on the farm and take a look at how the guys have done so far. Let's start with Roman Quinn, who's been really, really good so far. Yeah, he's yeah. gotten off to a very hot start so far this year, and that's great to see. And as you said, one of the fastest, he might be the fastest guy in baseball if he were to come up and take a look at his numbers. I mean, he's hitting over 300 still, high OPS. He's got that great gap power, and he's a name that we're going to have to keep an eye on all season long. And that's finally a good thing, because we talk so much about the pitchers, and we will, but there's a few guys that we'll need to keep an eye on as far as hitters, and Roman Quinn is at the top of that list, along with Michael Franco as well. Roman Quinn off to a great start. He might not be ready yet you know, for, for, to be promoted to the major leagues. He only has a couple weeks in AA, and you would figure that the Phillies would want to get him to AAA by the end of the season if he remains this hot. But it creates an interesting scenario for the future. The Phillies are going with Odubel Herrera right now in center field. They clearly see Roman Quinn as a center fielder of the future. Does that shift Herrera to one of the outfield corners? Does it shift him back to the infield? He was a guy who, in the Rangers system, played second base. But the way Roman Quinn is hitting right now, he's knocking on the door pretty fast. Play him a little second base when you give Utley a rest? Herrera? Yeah. You know, maybe in the future that might be the plan. Pat, you did mention the pitchers, and we do talk a lot about them, and rightfully so. Zach Eflin, yet to allow a run yet this season. Yeah, 15 and two-thirds innings, zero runs. We've talked so much, again, about that pitching staff and five baby aces at Reading. And take a look at some of these numbers. Just insane from Eflin through those three starts. No runs, just three walks, and only seven strikeouts. But he's allowing batters to hit just 164 against him. He is pitching the best of those five. And we talk so much about Aaron Nola being the guy who's on the fast track to the major leagues. But Eflin's another guy that you got to look out for. Yeah, and so you mentioned Michael Franco earlier as well, and he's, he's off to a hard start hitting pretty well so far. He's given the Phillies the exact start they needed with power, with all the extra base hits. He had, I think, eight extra base hits through his first 10 games this season. And when people say, call up Michael Franco, call up Michael Franco, gotta, gotta pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> Michael Franco, the Phillies probably want to hold him out until at least mid-May, late May, early June. For the same reasons the Cubs didn't open the season with Chris Bryant. Oh no! If Come you, on. No, if you wait, if you wait until the the middle or end of May, you get another year of control of Michael Franco. And we know that this season's not about results and wins and losses. And it's not like if Franco comes up May first, the Phillies are going to finish ten games better than they would if he came up May fifteenth. We want him now, though. Come well, on, I don't know. Yeah, there's not also there's also not a posi there's also not a position for him right now. Cody sure. Ashey's really hot at third base. Do you want to mess with that by putting him in a different I position? Hear, hear. And yeah. Ryan Howard's finally getting hot right now, and you need him to I'm keep hitting it. To try to trade him, I hear you. Frank, I definitely hear you. Yeah, no, you're right, Pat or Corey. You got to pump the brakes a little bit and kind of see how it goes. All right, let's break it down by the numbers presented by Shive Vintage Sports. Check out their new Spectrum shirts on ShiveSports.com. Corey, your first number is 79. 79. It has been 79 years since a Phillies rookie did what Odubel Herrera did in April. Herrera with seven extra base hits already in April. Right. The last Phillies rookie with seven extra base hits or more in April was Leo Norris all the way back in 1936. Oh, good old Leo Norris. So if it seems like Herrera's power start is unexpected and uh, uncommon, it really is. It's been 79 years since a Phillies rookie did this. All right, Pat, 165. 165 is Aaron Harang, and that is what the NL is batting against him. That's seventh in the National League so far. Here's a guy who signed a one-year, $5 million contract. He's really a fifth starter. He's been pitching like an ace, though, through yeah. the first week. He really has. You should, probably be, you should probably be able to get some trade value for Harang if he keeps pitching like this during the summer. You mentioned the 165 batting average. That's second best in the NL among guys with at least four starts. So he's been spot on so far. Okay, and Rachel, your number is the number five. Number five, five shutout innings for Philippe Aumont. In the form of reliever, he's come up here. They gave him a chance to pitch in the starting rotation, and he, he did pretty well. So maybe with if there's injuries in the big leagues or something, maybe he's a guy that they can look to. I mean, he, he struggled as a reliever yeah, in the majors, but time. but maybe uh, maybe this new Might role have to can wait be a it fit out for him. A little bit. Well, no, that's, we'll that's interesting. It is interesting. That's interesting because when the Phillies acquired Omont from the Mariners, he was a starting pitcher. They converted him to a reliever. He really has not succeeded in that role. So maybe this is a last ditch effort to get some value out of Philippe Omont. Yep. Yeah. And regardless, another five days he'll be starting again. So yes, we'll see will. how it goes. <laughs> All right, guys. Fantasy baseball. Brought to you by DraftKings. Visit DraftKings.com for daily fantasy baseball and use promo code, code FILLS for a free entry. See how you guys did last week. 
Corey. You did okay. I am eh, half, halfway there. I finally had a hitter who hit. I took Martin Prado because he's killed the Phillies over the course of his career, and he's also hit really well against Jordan Zimmerman, who he faced over the weekend. And Prado did me well. Hit over 300, hit three doubles, drove in six runs. So productive week from utility man Martin Prado. Pitching-wise, not so great. I picked Joe Kelly of the Red Sox, and he did give them five shutout innings against the Rays, but then got lit up in the sixth inning, allowing five runs. That Boston rotation is not looking pretty. They definitely need that ace that they think they don't need. You know? I was uh, so-so as well. Will Middlebrooks hit a home run, knocked in a few runs, hit under 300. And he was okay. John Neese split as well. Did well against Atlanta on Tuesday and then against the Yankees on Sunday. Not so good. So that's where we're at. <laughs> Coming up on Phillies Nation, the guys will talk more fantasy and give their closing arguments when we return. Play Daily Fantasy Baseball for free on DraftKings.com with the official Daily Fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter promo code FILLS for free entry. Behold, we are in the presence of champions. Fantasy sports legends who have earned hundreds of thousands of dollars playing online. Meet Arlie Gonzalez. Average guy, superior sports knowledge. Picked a team in minutes and won enough to throw the party of a lifetime. In outer space. Former accountant, Derek Bradley. DraftKings One Day Fantasy Baseball took him from a guy with holes in his underpants to a guy with bikini models in them. How do we turn our love of fantasy sports into reality cash? DraftKings.com. They have one day games, so you're not locked in. It's like a new season every time you play. And best of all, you could win a shipload of money. Start playing today for your share of $1 billion. Use promo code PITCH and get free entry in our 100K baseball contest on opening day. More sports, more winners, more millionaires. Get to DraftKings.com now. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Our customers tell us it's important that they know who they're doing business with. Basement foundation issues are never fun, and finding a contractor that you can trust can be hard. That's why I founded BQ Basement Systems in 1997. We're the experts in identifying and fixing problems in your basement, your crawl space, foundation repairs, and all things basementy. Have one of our certified inspectors out for your free evaluation and estimate. Visit us at bqbasementsystems.com or call us at 1-800-339-2070. Philly has a long sports history filled with great players and moments. Shive Vintage Sports in Center City relives the glory years with fashionable attire for all your favorite teams. Separate yourself from the crowd with the hippest Eagles, Phillies, Flyers, and Sixers gear. Pick up some unique shirts featuring local teams of yesteryear or come to fun events where you can learn about your favorite teams. So if you're a sports fan, then you need to check out Shive Vintage Sports. Visit them at 13th and Walnut or ShiveSports.com. I'm here with Major League Hitting Consultant Kevin Wilson at Everybody Hits on 6th and Girard. We're going to talk a little bit about the shift, which is becoming very prevalent in today's game. Year after year, you see more and more teams employing the shift against dead pull hitters. And I guess it's easier said than done when fans say a player like Ryan Howard, a player like David Ortiz, should try to go the other way and beat the shift. Kev, talk a little bit about what it takes to beat that shift. Yeah, I mean, Corey, to beat a shift, it's not as easy as like getting a pitch and just going that way. I think Major League hitters are very skilled in what they do, but let's keep in mind, these guys are throwing high velocities. The balls move, they cut, they dip, they dive. Um, it's not as easy as it sounds just to say, oh, I'm going to go and hit the ball where they're not. So I think a lot of it with the shift is, of, of course, the pitcher's going to pitch to the defense, similar to, hey, we got a man on third and the game's on the line, I'm going to bring the infield in. And so they're obviously going to pitch a ball down. They're going to run and sink it down to try to induce that ground ball. Kind of same thing is they're not going to just lay a pitch on the outside for a guy to go the other way. They're going to kind of you're going to try to run it, sink it, cut it, dive it, and get it in there. Um, that's what they're pitching to. So it's not as easy as saying, hey, I'm going to take this cutter inside as a lefty and try to fillet it that way. How do you see the shift evolving here on? I mean, Rob Manfred, the new Major League Commissioner, mentioned that baseball has toyed with the idea of eliminating it. Do you endorse that? How do you see it going forward? 
I'm, I'm not endorsing eliminating the shift. I think the shift is there, obviously, because the, the numbers don't lie. Right. I think we talk about that. Um, it has to have to do with the change in how the players approach the shift. The older veteran players, I'm sure, just like anything else, like stepping out of the box nowadays, there's going to be a little bit of a, a, a rift there with guys saying, well, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm paid millions of dollars, and this is how I'm going to do it. I've always done it this way. I think how you start to kind of get the shift to play back the other way and get it lined up correctly like it was 15, 20 years ago is simply just guys being able to execute what they want. Maybe get a pitch on the outside they can go the other way if they're shifting to the pool side. Um, getting younger players to buy in. And not a lot of minor leaguers and, and minor league organizations, they don't apply the shift uh, themselves. So how we beat this, in my opinion, is we don't have to get eliminated. I think the shift gets eliminated just naturally as the younger players come up and they're able to use the big part of the field, all parts of the field. Very nice. Well, he's Kevin Wilson, Major League Hitting Instructor. I'm Corey Seidman. Thanks to everybody hits here at 6th and Girard. Great stuff, Corey. Great stuff, Kevin. He's a wealth of knowledge as far as hitting goes. Let's go to our fantasy baseball picks for this week. It's brought to you by DraftKings.com, of course. The official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter the promo code FILLS for free entry. You're going with the big piece? Going with the big yes. piece this week for fantasy. Ryan Howard. Nice. I'll tell you why. Two homers over the weekend. He has four games in St. Louis this week where he's hit 360 right. with 10 homers and nearly as many walks as strikeouts. Later in the week, he faces the Marlins, two pitchers in Dan Heron and Tom Kohler that he has hit over the course of his career. So right. if you're ever starting the big piece, do it this week. Look at this guy, the big piece. Who you got else? Pitcher, pitching? Pitcher C.J. Wilson. He's pitching really well for the Angels. Goes up against the Giants Friday night in San Francisco. So he's in an NL park, no DH, spacious park, weak lineup. I'm going C.J. Wilson. Right, I'm going to go Carlos Martinez of the St. Louis Cardinals. He faces the Phillies on Wednesday. And we know the Phillies just have struggled to hit. They are last in the majors in batting average. So start Carlos, Carlos Martinez. And I'm also going with Kyle. Kyle Seeger of the Seattle Mariners. They have seven games this week against Texas and Houston. He's beaten up on those teams already this year. So look for more of that from Kyle Seeger. Not a guy that you would pretty much sit anyway, but I think he's going to have a big week. Let's go to our closing arguments. Should I start? Go first. Let's go with the DH in the National League. Can we please get one? You saw Adam Wainwright blow out his ankle, and you saw Max Scherzer get hit on the hand by a pitch. It's enough already. I know that people don't love the designated hitter, but now that NL teams are playing AL teams all the time. It's no longer this, you know, weekend series here or there. You've got to put the designated hitter in the National League because guys are going to get hurt, and these $200 million pitchers, they don't want to be out there taking hacks, and they're hitting 090 anyway. It's just not good entertainment. DH, NL, now. I want to talk about the Kansas City Royals and all the brawls they're getting into. They, they had three benches clearing brawls with the Athletics, one with the White Sox last week, a handful of suspensions handed down. But I think it's good for baseball. I really do. A lot of people are on their high horse. Oh, this is bad for the game, the sanctity of the game. This no, I mean, I'm not on board with what Giordano Ventura is doing because it's easy to be a clown like that when you don't have right. to worry about going to the plate and taking a 96-mile-hour heater to the back. But I love what I'm seeing out of the Royals. They're playing with a lot of fire. It reminds me of the 2007 Phillies, a team that learned how to win and then for a while didn't stop winning. I like sure. the way the Royals are playing. They're creating rivalries. They're creating intrigue and entertainment in the American League. I agree with you. That'll do it for us here on Phillies Nation. For Rachel, for Corey, for everyone here, I am Pat Gallon. We'll talk to you next week.